look at this board I built. I drew some pretty lines on it with copper and we are going to do some things to this board. These are all shorts. The resistance is basically zero. And the point of a trace like this is to connect one thing to another electrically. In this case, maybe a high speed digital signal, but something weird is going on here thanks to physics. Even though my resistance looks close to zero, the impedance is actually much higher. And in a minute, I'll prove it, but this impedance is helpful. A good trace is usually supposed to be around 50 ohms, so our resistance might be negligible, but this imaginary part matters a lot, especially at higher frequencies. If this sounds complexicated, don't worry, it's literally complex, but we'll walk through it. So on this board, some of these traces are good, they're close to 50 ohms, and some of them are bad, just objectively bad, but I have no idea which is which. I have some guesses, I bet you might too if you look closely, but Look at my glasses. I'm obviously a man of science. I don't want to guess. I want the facts. I want to know which of these traces are good, which ones are bad, and why. And also, could I make a good trace bad? Th that should be easy, right? The heart of this issue is that you could have the best schematic in the world and still end up with a board that doesn't work at all because you didn't draw your copper the right way. Sometimes it's not about the components you put on the board, it's about the physics of the board itself. I'm not an expert on this, but somehow, and I, I still don't know how, I got someone with a PhD in signal integrity to help me figure this out. This is Dr. Tim, our signal integrity shaman and PCB guide for the day. We're going to explore these traces both in simulation, which will show us how good we think they should be, and with a network analyzer, which will show us how good the traces actually are. I'm also curious to find out how well the sim matches the real world. So for our traces, we're trying to find the one that gets us closest to 50 ohms. But more than that, we want a flat frequency response. What we want is for the energy we put into the input to consistently come out of our output. This is called an S21 measurement and the pros like to call it insertion loss. The closer to zero dB, the farther up the trace is, the better. We also don't want reflections back into our input, so you put them in and they come back into the input. That's an S11 plot called return loss, and the lower this plot is, the better. So let's go figure out which one of <laughs> which one of these traces is good, about 50 ohms and a flat frequency response, and which ones are bad. It's time for some simulation and some measurement. To the lab. For our first trace, we've done something that that I might do. We've just made it as thin as possible. Our transmission line is three mils thick. That's three thousandths of an inch thick. Tim, how does this do in terms of impedance? I would imagine close to 100 ohms. So then, you know what, let's check back to the simulator and see what it would tell us. So you've loaded up the design files that we used to build this board exactly. into electrical performance scan. Right. This is the board layout. It says three mils. And we'll quickly simulate the trace. And sure enough, it's about 100 ohms, 93.8. So basically, if I have a 50 ohm on the side of my input or my exactly. DNA, exactly, it's going into a 100 ohm line. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be, it's not mass. We want 50 and 50. Exactly. There'll but, be some reflections coming okay. back. And in terms of dB, I mean, I'm predicting about minus 10 dB. Let's check. Okay. Oh. Oh, yeah. So now we're seeing here, it's, it's more like minus 5 dB. So the return loss is a lot worse than I thought. Typically, a rough rule of thumb is that we want minus 10 dB on the S11 return loss plot or better. So to start off our three mil trace, it's not looking good. The impedance is high, the return loss is high, but how does the VNA measurement compare to the SIM? Keep in mind that the VNA has also seen the fixtures and not just the board traces. So it definitely shouldn't be a perfect match, but let's see how close it is. So let's look at S11 here on the left side and we can see Drum roll, please. <laughs> so we are seeing, uh, you know, about minus 4 dB yeah. peak, and it looks pretty similar to the simulation. Yeah, I'm looking minus 5 dB. So a little bit of stuff happening here in the, mm. you know, above 10, below 15. Right. Any, any thoughts on, on what that might be? That's what we're talking about for the fixtures, because the fixtures are smaller discontinuities that would show up as a frequency ramp up. Okay. How would we convert what we're looking at here into a, a impedance value? Can you do that in your head? <laughs> Ooh, I know the formula. It's going to be 50 times 1 plus S11 over 1 minus S11. Check my math, friends. Okay. We'll put that here. <laughs> <laughs> 
So we have a lot of traces to get through. I don't want to dwell too long in this one. The next thing I might do if I, if I saw this number is instead of having a super thin trace, I would just go wild with the trace thickness. And that's what we have on trace five. So let's do board one, trace five. To understand what you're about to see, you need to know a little bit about how boards like this are laid out, specifically board stack up. Basically, how thick are all the layers in our board and how far apart are those layers? The boards we made are all four layer boards. There's four copper layers. That's the CF004 and the CF003. Separating our copper layers is prepreg and core material. Basically, it's layers of cured fiberglass, and we know how thick all these layers are. And Tim has a rule of thumb for us. If the trace width is 2x the substrate height, it's going to be 50 ohms. So ideally, we want our trace thickness to be about twice as thick as the substrate is tall. Here's what that means for our boards. Between the first layer and the second layer, the prepreg is about 8 mils. Okay. To get a 50 ohm, you will have a 16 mil line. Okay. But, Mr. Daniel, this is a thick boy. <laughs> we have 161 mils. So it should have been 16 based on the rule of thumb. This is 161. Ooh, exactly. Okay, so basically 10x. So f say if it's I'm, 50, I'm 10x engineering here. Too. Exactly, right? So take 50 divided by 10, maybe 5 ohms. You okay. know, let's say, let's say 5 ohms. Okay, all and right? you've not made this measurement. So let's, I have not let's made see. this measurement. And then, you know, let's do some simulation. Drum roll, please. 7.9. Oh, so you right. were 50% off. Then. <laughs> <laughs> Well, or you were uh, 2.9 ohms off, so yeah, that's there you go. Good. There you go. Yeah. Ooh, now, yeah, return loss. All right, return loss on the simulation. It says, ooh, all right, close to zero dB because it knows things are getting sent back. Can you talk me through some of these, yeah, spike ripples on on sim? And we see it on the VNA too. I'm just jumping the gun here. Why is it why is it dipping down like that? Is that a like a harmonic of some type or a factor of the length of the board? You can be your own shaman, Mr. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. So between the reference planes here, there is a certain length between them. Okay. And there is quarter wavelength transmission effect. Basically, weird things happen at a quarter wavelength. That's out of scope for today, but we did get closer to figuring out which traces are good or bad. Our thin 3 mil trace actually has an impedance around 100 ohms, even though my DMM says it's about 1 ohm. And our chunky boy thick trace, which shows less than 0.1 ohm on the DMM, is actually more like 8 ohms. The thick one is also reflecting like crazy. And these blender animations are using real electromagnetic simulation data. So this is more of an electrophysics simulation than an animation. I'll stop geeking out, sorry, but it's so cool. The point is, neither of these traces are close to our 50 ohm target. So we need to find a thickness that's a happy medium. And we did that. Well, well, maybe. We designed in a trace that we think is pretty good. It should be close to 50 ohms, but it's never been tested. Until now. That's really cheesy. We're like Lewis and Clark, but for Colorado Springs circuit board shipment number three. I need a new script writer. Anyway, uh, I'm the script writer. This trace is 13.4 millimeters thick. Let's see how close to 50 ohms our simulation thinks it is. As our simulator suggests, we are a little bit above the 50, we're 51.5. All right, what does it look like on the VNA? How does our sim and our VNA match Ooh, up? Ooh, okay, so now we're talking about return loss on the VNA. Now I would, I would expect very little to be reflected to min less than minus 20 dB on the S11. Okay, and then what do we see here? So here's 20 dB. And that looks pretty similar. We're getting a, you know, we don't get that nice limit convergence at higher right. frequencies, but you know, we talked about the inconsistencies of the soldering. And yeah, yeah, I know the soldering's bad. You probably expect that from me by now on this channel, but what matters is now we have a trace that's good enough. It's 13.4 mils thick. That gets us roughly 50 ohms at room temperature. Dramatic zoom in. Oh, that's a cue. What happens if it gets super cold or super hot? Would Keysight let me buy and use liquid nitrogen to find out? I don't want anyone to tell me no, so I'm just gonna do it. Also, I need a drill press for for reasons. Let's go shopping. No, I'm just kidding. I already I already did it. I'm just I'm just pretending this is real time. Roll the tape. That's so dumb. So dumb.
So our first stop is at a welding supply store to get some liquid nitrogen. So, let's see if it works. And there he is. Don't spill it on yourself and don't crash. Maybe I'll come around. And our final stop, budget hardware supply store. So we need a drill press. Yeah. Tiny, look how little those are. They're actually cheaper than I thought it would be. I know, that's what I'm saying. They're not that expensive and they're not that nice. <laughs> we, can get, we can get one use out of it. So sometimes you need to film somewhere that's well ventilated and it's not going to raise too many questions. So you turn your garage into a video studio. What are you doing, Tim? Setting up the drill press. Setting up the drill press. I'm going to let this play out in the background. See if you can figure out what we're trying to do while I tell you some things you want to hear. And I promise I'll end it with some nice satisfying drill press action. So stick with me. What you've seen so far is only about 20% of what Tim and I did in the lab. It's all part of our Keysight World Live from the Lab event, which happens on March 14th. You can sign up now to watch the whole thing using the link in the description, preferably in a new tab, live or on demand. And if you sign up, you'll be entered into a huge test gear giveaway also that runs all year long. The prizes are insane. I'm giving away a bunch of pro-grade test gear, including two 6 gigahertz 8-channel MXR oscilloscope Use the link and sign up. You don't want to miss out on this. And also, you'll get to see the hour-long deep dive version of this. There's two more boards that we haven't covered today that cover more than just trace thickness. So join me live on March 14th. We'll premiere the whole video version of this over there, and Tim and I will take your questions live. We'll also have more sessions like this all year long covering different topics like power and quantum computing and wireless communications and RF engineering. I'm like electrical engineering Frodo here with the one link that gives you access to all the streams and entry into the giveaway. So here's what we've been doing in the background. There's this troublesome phenomena called via stub resonance. Basically, when you have a via, this is not a real via, don't worry. And a via lets you move your signal from one layer of the board. Oh, my other guy is still on the printer. Mm, one shot, here we go. Oh yeah. To another layer. Does it fit? It fits on the first try. So basically we have signal coming in here, down to layer two and along its merry way. On one of our live from the lab boards, I built a trace like this, where it goes from layer one to layer two and then back up to layer one. The problem is, as the signal moves through here, it also goes down through the rest of the via, and this stub resonates, screwing up the trace. It reflects, it transmits, it does all sorts of thing. things. An easy but expensive way to fix this is to back drill the part of the via that we don't need, and then your stub is so short it, it doesn't matter anymore. So what we're doing here is trying to drill it by hand and see what the trace looks like with the via, and then after drilling when the via stub is gone. Ooh, I'm drilling it. So the red trace is how it was originally. The yellow trace is the new one. We're above 20 dB on some points now. You're at like 17. Okay, let's get it better. Oh, oh no. it's through, it's through. Oh man, it's oh. through. <laughs> like, <laughs> that one moment. <laughs> it like snapped through the board. We drilled right through that board. Okay. Now um, we know what a through looks like when yeah. it's all the way through. <laughs> Back through all the way through. It's an no. open. Oh man, okay. Well, we should mark that board and... Done. Now it's time for some liquid nitrogen. It's time for some <laughs> liquid nitrogen. <laughs> Okay, so we have our liquid nitrogen, our PPE. We're gonna test board one, trace four. This is the pretty standard micro strip line. And we're gonna pour some liquid nitrogen over the top of this and try to avoid hitting our connectors. This is like minus 300 degrees Fahrenheit. It's very cold. Don't try this at home. As far as yeah. the S parameter goes, yes. because when it gets cold, the resistance goes down. down. That means the loss gets not as lossy, so insertion loss should be better. So we should see our VNA trace get taller yes, for yes, S21 yes, or yes, higher. Yes, yes, yeah. That's what we expect. Okay, here we go. Ah. Ooh, we do see the S21 going up as you pour. Like crazy. 
Oh man. A lot actually. Oh man, that's really cool. Look at that, science works. Yay, science. So how many dB are we looking at, Tim? Well, we're looking at, I zoomed in, because I know the impact's gonna be huge, but we do see the difference here. The key is that what we expect is the loss is gonna go down, and we're seeing that loss curve pop up, that the slope is changing. Oh, it frosted everything. Oh. Do you know what we're gonna have to do now is hit it with, with a heat, heat torch. The styrofoam flammable? I think it is. <laughs> when we heat it, it should go the other way, right? Like Yeah, when we heated it. The resistance will, will go up. Yeah, and it's gonna get more lossy. Oh, grab the thermal gun, Tim. 185, 5, 540, 545 is the See? max. 400 degree Fahrenheit. Keep going, I'm just gonna keep going with it. Ooh, it's burning. Uh-oh. <laughs> I burned it. I burned the solder mask. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> we got the smoke out. I think we're done. Oh, that's 500 Fahrenheit right there. Okay. I wonder what the board's back oh, is. It's, <laughs> it's oh, it's really lossy at that point. That's interesting. Look at that data. Okay. So... We survived. So we have a little liquid nitrogen left, so we're going to try and make ice cream while we recap what we learned. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. Definitely sweet. Mm. Three Taste. twists of salt, I think. Yeah. Approximately. Okay. Mm. All right, so what did we learn today? We learned about impedance boards mm -hmm. and that too thick is not good, too thin is not good. Mm -hmm. And the rule of thumb, remind me again, the rule of thumb on trace width, now that your mouth is full. <laughs> If you want to get your microstrip trace on your FR4 board to be 50 ohms, the trace width should be two times of the substrate height. And the rule of thumb held up, so we're good to go there. Also, this was part of one of our Keysight World Live from the Lab events. So if you haven't signed up, check out the link below. Go sign up, we're giving away a bunch of test gear, and we're doing different experiments live from the lab every other month or so. It's gonna be a great time. Oh, that no, didn't work at all. Okay, cut. If it's 